All right, everyone. Well, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery Class. We've got some news to unpack. We're going to dive into some markets, look at what Bitcoin is doing, what it's likely to do. And uh, this uh, is predominantly also a training for the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And then uh, we're going to look at some movers and shakers, etc. So diving into the news here, just to start out, though, uh, let's see. Chinese government approves Hong Kong's crypto plans. Isn't that interesting? China buy, bans crypto all year long, multiple times over the past few years, but now is suddenly approving crypto in Hong Kong. And I'm hearing that the money's been funneling over to Hong Kong to do that. Such a funny dynamic, right? So they um, helped uh, uh, topple the 64K high and uh, in terms of back at the heights, saying crypto, China bans crypto, and now they're helping to buy back at the bottom via Hong Kong. So uh, interesting how they play the game, um, but not surprising, is it? So China dipping its toes back in the crypto world by allowing Hong Kong to open up to the market. So what I also posted in the active trader chat yesterday and uh if you're here from crypto mastery and not part of active trader and you wanted to find out more about our daily weekly classes there that's just moonstream.io slash m3 in terms of the what i posted there though the winklevoss twins or at least one of them the winklevi as we call them along with uh, other people are suggesting that asia will lead the next bull run and so this certainly leads to that narrative that um you know, because why? Because they don't have restrictions. We don't have all this regulation that the U.S. is uh, blowing it. They're going to be last, will be last here if we keep up this pace. But China and Asia getting ahead of this, uh, China through Hong Kong and some of the other areas. So uh, this is certainly the first stop, uh, first start. So uh, it's interesting that we're trading down here today on this news. This is big news. And um, the Chinese government seems to keen to relax this draconian anti-crypto stance, at least in Hong Kong. And subtle approvals of hints of Hong Kong efforts position itself again, once again, as a crypto hub. And the report indicates, although Beijing isn't anywhere close to making legal in the Chinese mainland again, it seems willing to let the city develop its crypto industry. Isn't that interesting? All right, what I'm, let me just turn on the chat here too so I can see you guys and uh, the participants window. Gotcha, so I got you guys up top here. But uh, Hector here, JJJ, I guess Julie KS. I uh, said hi to everyone else, I think already. Lisa, Marcia, Pirate J, Rennie, Tori, and Pirate J in there again. Pirate J, you're in here twice, unless, wait, private. No, that's someone else, gotcha. All right, welcome everyone, and uh, certainly uh, we'll get to questions. So this is big news here, and um, uh, I think um, I'm going to need to digest this a bit more. It was a little bit unexpected, but at any rate, so let's see approvals, so implicit endorsements in the city. So they're trying to get ahead of this, and um, it is interesting to me because not only are they stockpiling gold. And uh, the rumors are that Russia and China are in cahoots in creating a gold-backed new uh, global currency, possibly competing for the world reserve currency. So it's interesting they are sort of sidestepping, have their one foot uh, out the closet door into Hong Kong, getting into Bitcoin and crypto. So I wonder what the play is there. Maybe it's a backup plan. And so, uh, but anyway, this is good news. As long as it doesn't violate the bottom line, not threaten financial stability in China, Hong Kong is free to explore in its own pursuit under the one country, two systems. Sounds like a bipolar personality to me. Uh, but um, hey, you know what? It, all kidding aside, for those of you in the US, there's a major insurance company called Allstate. Years and years ago, there was a low cost competing company that came out called eSurance. Anyone remember that? Well, Allstate bought insurance and owns and operates insurance because why not own the competition? Pretty savvy move and uh, suggested that and, and coached business owners. I work a lot with business owners, or at least in my past life here. Uh, but um, good strategy. So that could be what's going on here. A Hong Kong Security and Futures Commission proposed yesterday a consultation paper to allow retail investors to ability to trade large cap cryptocurrencies, blah, 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 risk profiles, disclaimer, and okay. All right, interesting. 
So uh, we'll keep an eye on that for sure. Let's see. Uh, also in the uh, news, uh, I always do air quotes around news because a lot of this, uh, you know, especially on these sites like CoinDesk where they have ads all over it, it's uh, some clickbait as we call it in the internet world. It's a bit sensationalized. And as you guys know, I say, show me the chart. I'll tell you the news, the China news. So it's uh, actual news. That's so uh, interesting. Bitcoin is... So here, here we see these, the, just even the bad grammar. They rush out these articles and apparently uh, Om, Omakar God, Godbali, um, uh, shocker, English isn't his first language. And, um, you, you know, no offense to Omkar, but somebody should proofread this. Bitcoin is struggle to establish a foothold above 25K. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, no shit, Sherlock, as we say here in the United States, I've been saying that, we've been saying that for days in the chat and watching that 25k 200 level uh, i've already kind of discounted this this real news or uh just crypto cc this isn't really worth what reading i don't think we'll unpack that today so uh what else bitcoin active addresses concern analysts well analysts are a dime a dozen these days but um so we'll take it with a grain of salt here uh, concern analysts despite 50 percent price bitcoin price gains let's see what his argument is a lax active address growth. Okay, so this is certainly significant on-chain volume divergence from previous Bitcoin bull markets. So that's interesting to me. We are looking for clues. And, um, you know, the short squeeze, the big push higher here was fueled by a number of things. But the question that is concerns us now is, and I'll just hop over here, is what, uh, you know, what happens here we've come pretty far but this is starting to look like a bull flag though and we're going to talk about that so the question is do we start rolling over and coming down or do we shoot up higher and how high and uh but it has a lot to do with sort of why that went up in the first place and a lot of it uh, i think was uh, short squeeze driven <coughs> all right so we need to mute somebody there coughing a bit uh sorry guys we'll we'll figure that out and again we'll we need to get that auto muted if you guys do want to come on and and ask your question live that uh <laughs> yeah pirate jay was that a cough a trade signal joking um if you do want to ask questions live just raise your hand and i'll bring you on we can do it that way so let's see uh the, where were we frank appraisal of the 2023 bitcoin rebound on chain and analytics platform crypto quant warned bitcoin might be weaker than it seems yeah well you know um that that i would agree with so active address is not copying bull market paradigm what that means folks active addresses are you know people that have uh, bitcoin addresses and if you go on to um uh let's see um I just canceled my um, subscription because we haven't been using it for uh, coin uh, coin glass. That's not it. What is it? You guys probably know what it is. Um, trying to do too many things at once, but essentially they they segment out the number of addresses that people can have, whether they're zero or hundred, zero a thousand, over ten thousand. Let's see what that thing's called because I'm drawing a blank and I don't want to look stupid that I don't remember what it's called and. What is that thing called? I'm drawing a total glass node. Sorry about that. So um, I probably still have access to it. We could go into that. I I just have stayed away from on-chain metrics because I've talked to a number of you. It's uh, it's it's kind of smoke and mirrors, you guys. And if any of you are out there and you do follow on-chain metrics, uh, I'll finish my uh, comment here. But you know, uh, here's my context for that. I spent an hour in a whale session at Bitcoin 2022, probably about 40, 50 whales in the room. And Dylan Lachere, the, the editor of Bitcoin Magazine, did a whole hour-long presentation on why Bitcoin would not go below 30,000 based on all the on-chain metrics. And he had very compelling arguments and, uh, until the end when I kind of looked around and raised my hand and said, well, what do you, what would you say to people like me who think we, we could go down to 20,000? And he kind of scoffed, sort of condescendingly said, well, I just covered all the reasons uh, why and all the, you could just, you would heard a pin drop and all the whales looked over like who let that guy in here. And, um, um, but I was right. And, and I was right at 16.5. And so point is a lot of this on-chain metric stuff 
it's interesting. You know, I would agree that if you see a huge amount of Bitcoin come off of a cold wallet onto an exchange, usually that means some selling pressure may ensue. But it could also mean, as we've learned now, that they're going to move their coins onto multiple different wallets addresses. So you just can't, you know, I, I just show me the chart. I'll tell you what's going on in most in most capacities. Uh, certain times, like right now, I, it's not clear which way we go. So, um, but back to this uh, active address is not copying bull market paradigm. And what this means is you start seeing a lot more new Bitcoin addresses coming in and they can track active addresses. Are they trading? Are they moving coins around? And a, an inactive address is where they are still sitting on cold storage wallets and uh, not really doing as much. So it says as on-chain metrics flip green and some even flash bulls seen signals not seen in years. A healthy dose of suspicion remains among many analysts. So I would agree with that. Uh, crypto quant contributor is among them and uh, doesn't chime with previous bull markets. Now, I don't fully agree with that. I saw an interesting video. And by the way, there's a lot of great information out there. Part of my job is to digest this for you guys. And it's certainly very um, uh, hmm, uh, diverse right now. And so there's some great arguments that this is a bull trap. This is about to roll over. We're going to retest the lows and maybe go lower. So there's some compelling technical arguments there. But I did watch one recently by a somewhat new analyst. Uh, and he was, uh, which we'll look at, is comparing the um, similarities to this uh, push higher to the 2019 market where it just exploded higher and it didn't look back. Uh, and I had... Um, proposed that earlier, I think it was last month in January, that if we if we do break past 25,000, I was saying 24,500 was this resistance level. If we break that, we'll go to 30,000. And so now everyone's not coming out saying the same, uh, but uh, which we can look at too. But at any rate, the problem, he explains, lies in active addresses, as I was saying, which are not increasing in number, despite Bitcoin USD gaining almost 50% year to date. And so in contrast, however, there is a, another project that is seeing uh, record new addresses. And I was just reading about Phantom Coin. Phantom Coin is, as you guys know, is one of our favorites over at Moonstream. And uh, that has seen some excellent uh, active address growth. So people are very bullish on Phantom Coin. Everyone following active addresses is a metric that includes all addresses sending and receiving Bitcoin, providing a new look, a prodding look at rather at how active the market demand is. So uh, price of an asset is determined by the laws of supply and demand. Now we'll talk about that in a little bit when it comes to the halving coming up. Crypto markets are no exception for asset prices to rise. Market interest and demand must be supported. So, um, so in sh the short term, and we're going to look at our indicators, which are, are giving us a slightly different picture in the near to longer term, you know, and, and that's bullish. And in the longer term, we are coming closer to where the bull market usually does start. And that's anywhere from 396 or seven days to 400 days prior to the next halving. And now that's getting close. The next halving happens in 2020, early 2024. Uh, and uh, sorry, a little bit later in 2024, whereby the supply will be greatly diminished. So we do want to keep that in mind. I'll repeat this. The price of an asset is determined by the laws of supply and demand in the market. So that alone should send Bitcoin dramatically higher once we've bottomed. All right. So I don't want to go too far deep into this, but it's actually a pretty interesting article uh, accompanying a chart. So it's 30 day moving average of active addresses. So this is some on chain metric um, technicals, which um, I think it's worth talking about. This is, you know, typically the crypto mastery class is a bit more beginner, skewed beginner, intermediate. This is a little more advanced. So we may unpack this a little more in tomorrow's active trader class. But uh, we can see the 30 day moving average of active addresses on Bitcoin increasing following the end of the 2018 bear market and the March 2020 COVID crash, flash crash. And by 2023, by contrast, has yet to produce the same trend. So here you see these arrows, which are sort of 
correlative of the uptrend in active address, 30 day moving average. Okay. We're not seeing that right now. So that's interesting. So that's another clue that we want to add to the, the mix here. Many transaction, not much volume. Now, the problem with volume is these exchanges often have, and have been recently accused rather uh, of you know, trading amongst itself on both sides of the transaction to inflate the volume. So guys, we're still in the wild, wild west here, which is good and bad. Pioneers are the, the people, the guys and gals with the arrows in their backs, if you remember, but they're also the ones that found the gold uh, and, and, and digital gold in this case. So, so we'll move on here, but related snap back to 20K, five things to know about Bitcoin this week. I'm, I'll just open that quickly. So an analytics firm, Glassnode, yeah, of course, uh, there's other one called CryptoQuant. Uh, notes on-chain volume remains low. So, you know, the, basically the, the, the activity is not really there yet. And uh, maybe what I'll do, you guys, for those of you an active trader, we'll dive into that deeper tomorrow because uh, we're spending a little bit too much time here on this. Um, let's see five things to know about Bitcoin this week. Let's see another classic fake out during low volume weekend. Yeah, so last this weekend, low volume, we, we saw the prices push back up to that $25,200 range, got real close to the 25300 uh, level, which is a huge line in the sand. And uh, so, but it was, you know, it was interesting. I was wondering, and you should always have some skepticism when you see big moves on weekends, especially on low volume and on a holiday weekend. Of course, the markets were closed. U.S. markets closed yesterday because of President's Day. So, uh, you know, so let's see. February progress much slower, hard one. So, and that's what I've been just saying. We had a huge green candle, monthly candle in January, 40% gains. It was likely and expected to slow down. So the big question right here, how will the rest of the month pan out? And I'm going to suggest, as I said, also March to be feels ominous. And I think uh, that was a good chance that uh, we pull back strongly in March. Some are saying crash. <laughs> well, it's funny. If those of you following chat GPT, the new AI algo. Now, there was a rumor that it said uh, chat GPT predicts to crash March 15th. Um, I, I immediately said that I think that's BS because I had asked chat GPT in December when it first was kind of coming out, what is the next, the price predictions for Bitcoin? And they have a very canned answer saying, uh, I can't predict the future. So maybe somebody was able to ask more poignant questions, but I think that was fake news. At any rate, I think March going into March, uh, going to be, um, I think we, we I think we should pull back down. We'll look at that in a bit and retest the lows potentially, <clears throat> or hopefully put in a higher low. So uh, a couple of reasons for that. We have an RSA bearish divergence. Yeah, we talked about that last week, and that still exists here. So you know things are slant, slanted negative for me. The thing that's kind of has me worried is there's so much short interest and uh, leverage uh, shorts uh, lining up. You can see that on uh, platforms, uh, various platforms that show that like a high block. And um, uh, I, I, I don't like to get into that, but there's heat maps and the exchanges and traders can see where all the shorts are lining up. And so there's becoming a high incentive for them to push prices up in a flash pump to wipe out the shorts, flip everyone along, and then they drop it again. But I don't know if they can get past that. We have to watch and see. All right. Well, this is enough of this. So, oh, here's an example of that. So this is uh, this is uh, one of those here that just for those of you that are new to this, uh, don't go out and get this. This is just um, another distraction. But this is one of those platforms here. Which one? Which one is it? They've cropped it out, I think, on the price. But these are levels of short interest, and you can see that right up to twenty five thousand. There's a lot of short interest right here at 25K300. And some were saying that's the Binance, uh, I forget what they call it, but the I'm just going to say the Binance Mafia. That's not correct. But there's a lot of short interest right here. And, uh, and at 25K500, a lot up here. So, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of um, 
uh, the bears are really trying to hold that. So we're not going to go deeper into all this here. Let's kind of move on. We're getting into a rabbit hole here. So with that tier, let's see that we covered multi coin. That's something uh, So we are still seeing funding in the crypto uh, ecosystem, which is good. Solana based crypto wallet tip link. Uh, I had opened that mostly because I we're going to be building a web three wallet into my uh, SaaS platform, which is called click sales. You might hear more about that soon, but um. Not really relevant to what we do. Biggest movers, BCH, uh, not interested in. One coin, Crypto Queen. Huh, okay. Well, sorry to hear that. I just didn't really know what that was about. Uh, mysteriously, lots, many crypto billionaires are winding up dead, everyone. So, you know, for those of you that are sitting around saying, gee, I wish that I, and if only I could have, should have, would have bought Bitcoin back then. I'd be a billionaire. Careful what you wish for, everyone. I'm going to pull up Crypto Panic here a bit. Hmm. Uh, not much. Let's see. Yeah. Almost broke 25K. Stocks dip, so no dice this time. Uh, no idea who that is. Just skimming through. So there's not a whole lot here. We've covered the big news. Chinese government approves Hong Kong crypto plants. So with that in mind, or 25 minutes in, spend a little bit of time on the news, but that's part of what we do here on the Crypto Mastery class. All right, uh, any questions? I don't see any questions or comments. So let's just take a look here and um, see what we see. <clears throat> so what I have on here is a 21 and 50 day exponential moving average, which I'll turn off and doesn't, well, before we do that, the only thing that's relevant here is uh, if it does pull back Bitcoin, there's some support here at 23.3 and also at the 50-day moving average, which is rising to this trend line support. Now, I haven't heard anyone talk about this yet, but there's a big ol, spelled O-L with a, hypof a, a, a hyphen hypostrophe thing, a big old bull flag. We're lucky there. Now, the potential price target on that on a break, if we do get above 25, five, let's say 25, four, 25, three is really that magic number we got real close to this. this uh, um, well, late last night, it looks like, but the measured move on this bell flag breakout would take us to looking there, 30,000. Who remembers me saying 30,000 before? 30,000. Now, why is that? Well, it doesn't take a rocket surgeon to see. I know it's rocket scientists, everyone, but rocket surgeons are more fun. There's, there's a lot of liquidity there. So 30,000, um, if, so here's where I want, why I want everyone to be careful. And um, bottom line is, you know, if, if we break above on a daily basis and can close up above this upper trend line, then I would suggest we could see a, a big incoming rally and pump to the 28,000 to 30,000 level, that green zone. And I, you know, I, I'm going to make it, <clears throat> well, I'll leave it as green zone because that's the opportunity zone. It's resistance. So normally I'd code it red, but this is how you would draw a chart on this. Does that mean that's going to do that? Nope. So, but a now when I, why I say on a closing basis, because and I want to make sure everyone understands this. See this candle right here. I'm going to cop. I'm going to make a little copy of it for a visual example. All right. If you see or we see tomorrow or today, suddenly Bitcoin's are, are running. It's a back above that level. Wait till the end of the day please, because you never know. These things can do things like this. This would be green and looking like it was run into the moon. But if it has a big topping tail and closes back below this, it was a fake out. And that's that, that we're going to see more of these <clears throat> at these levels. There's a big battle between the bulls and bears right now. Uh, now, the alternative would be, so that's one option. I'm trying something new, you guys. I'm you know, some of you are visual learners, men are very visual, just uh, so I think this could be uh, useful to um, 
do this. So where I'm, I'm scanning for the ideal candle on the bullish side that we'd want to see. And the ideal scenario would be a little bit like a rocket sitting right on that launch pad. Now, usually we see those as moving averages and trend lines that are uh, trending, not so much on a uh, uptrend. I can't find the perfect one here, but what I want to see, all right, even this one. Okay. Grab that, copy paste. So now the ideal scenario is looking to look a little grainy because it's not to scale. Oops. Uh, if we see something like this above that, that would be bullish and time to get in. Stop losses right below that level. So, so these are the two scenarios, just so we're clear. Uh, and uh, or uh, scenario three is it rejects altogether right here. And I, let's see what happens end of today because this thing could still come down. But that so I think there's there's an equal chance right now that we blast through this and run to thirty thousand, and then we see a big dump and come back down. Uh, and uh, so you have to kind of follow the money. There's incentive from the big exchanges, the whales, etc., to liquidate the shorts in here. Let all the longs flip bullish and you'll see all these guys coming in 100x leverage, 50x leverage because they said we're going and then they and they run it up. They run it all by, by the time you get here, they're, everyone's bullish and they're going to take it down. Potentially, you have to be aware of that. OK, made my point. Uh, let's see. Pirate Jay says I do. All right. Thank you. Uh, you know, and I hope, you know, look, I, I hope you guys, I don't do a lot of that. And in some of these channels, they come out and they're like, you know, I, I, I was correct. And they come back and they're just beating their chest. I don't need to do that. I just want to make sure that um, you guys uh, remember that because, um, you know, uh, we have been saying this for a while. Uh, all right. So with that in mind, that's Bitcoin daily chart. Let's see what else is going on. We cover all the indices and everything else tomorrow in the active trader class, just kind of skimming through. Everything's red today. Uh, so what we could also do is look for some movers. We covered the news. I'm surprised that we didn't see more of a push, though, with that Hong Kong news. Uh, could it possibly have been leaked back in here and that pushed everything up here? We're going to see some profit taking. Certainly possible. But... Um, you know, uh, let's see, I've got, we'll, we'll look at our AI coins tomorrow. Uh, those have been on fire. And again, if you're not in Active Trader, M3 Active Trader, you can go to, uh, sorry for the soft pitch, you guys. We do have people from various sources here, and it's just Moonstream. Most of you are from the Moonstream class from M3. So welcome. And, you know, we go into more detail on all that tomorrow. Anyway, there it is. So if you'd like to uh, join us for that, you can sign up there. Uh, as far as all these, though, and let's look at the... Um, Real quick, we'll just skim through these. We got Phantom Coin up. We've got near the short three uh, X short on near is up because everything's down. Poly is up. Not really sure what that is. So let's look at Phantom Coin. And as you know, that's one of our favorites over in uh, Moonstream. It's been very good to us, and uh, especially since um, uh, Mike originally called that May of 2020, but we re doubled down on that. On Phantom Coin in January of 2021, went up 18,525 percent. We doubled down on, tripled down on it in November of 2022, and it promptly went down. But um, uh, it, since then, it's up uh, 277 percent. So Phantom Coin is definitely one to keep an eye on, and it's up 120 percent, 123 percent since. Uh, we triple, triple down on in the newsletter. It, it's a strong ecosystem. I'm going to share some things with you guys in Active Trader that uh, actually I think I linked to in the in the group this morning. Just a lot happening in the ecosystem, and of course uh, our Moonstream pick for February, uh, Mike picked uh, is a is a, uh, a Dex, an interesting Dex uh, built around Phantom. So lots going on there. Um, all right, so Phantom Coin, there we go, and everything else is down. So interestingly. Phantom coin is up. Where is it also sitting on its 21 day EMA? All right. Well, since this class is supposedly supposed to be around our indicators, what can we see here? Well, we can see with perfect 2020 hindsight, right? Uh, that the best time to be have bought Phantom coin was back here. You know, back here when the ERI went green, the TSI ticked up of here, signal and bell. So again, ERI, TSI, signal and bell. You guys are going to start hearing that in your sleep. Uh, and that's my goal. 
B-R-I-T-S-I signal and bell because right back in here when the bell clicked, beautiful time. That was right early January. We're up 200% plus. So um, guys, we will keep reiterating this. Trust your indicators. And uh, so uh, where are we now? We're kind of in no man's land here. So the trend indicator, no trend. This just means no trend. And uh, what we are waiting for, however, is if we start seeing the midline green check, and those of you, again, uh, use your, your uh, checklist, your uh, successful trade checklist. And um, so that would be one of them. And then when we get a new bell, that'll be bullish again. It's, this is a good breather, a good pullback, but we still could pull back further on things. And then, of course, you know, where are we? We're, we're oversold on the ERI, but the mechanics of the ERI, and some of you remember this, but it, we, can we get an ERI here? No. Why? The early reversal indicator, and this is the accidental pattern, air quotes, accidental, because this is a pattern I noticed in one of the old indicators that we were about to turn off. And I said to Joe, I said, hey, Joe, do you realize that when, it, when this goes down below three and back above 20, in three periods or less, it's a high probability that it goes to the upper side and price goes up. So right here, hit zero, almost one, two, three. So you see this vertical green line, that's what triggers the ERI. Similarly, on the bearish side, hit this is the 100% line. And then from here, one and in two time periods was below 80. So that triggered the bearish ERI. In English, it shows the footprints of giants. It shows that there is a quick pullback and of money flow. It's a footprint of following the footprints of elephants. Keep that in mind. So why can we not get an ERI here? Well, because it's not low enough yet. So, and this is a good, a new nuance we haven't talked about. So that's, that's troubling for two reasons, because if we start pushing higher, I have less confidence in it going to new highs. We're in a daily time frame um, because we can't get the ERI. And troubling, you know, I would rather see it drop at least to the lower edge of that bull flag and get another fresh ERI here. Do you guys agree? These are the times we want to be getting in, not up here. So we're waiting and watching right now. Not to say it can't keep going higher. We're, you know, there's, Big market forces at play here. And the TSI is sort of trying to go up, but it's lost its velocity and momentum. What we want to see is this, that vertical um, continuation here. And we've seen a bit of a pullback still above the red, could still go higher, but just that's feeling a little weak. Signal line has been red for some time now. So we'd love to see a reset, come down, see a new signal, and uh, so right now, ERI, TSI signal and bell, I mean, technically the TSI is green, but we really want to kind of catch it down the lower edge here. So on phantom coin, the next opportunity to get in would have been when on this ERI, let me just turn that on, this green arrow here, and then the TSI went green here, and then we had that big push, you know, a little bit of exhaustion push higher. All right, you guys. So I think that that hopefully explains it. Let's put on the radar here. Radar is mostly green on Phantom Coin. So what is important here is keep an eye on what's strong when everything else is weak. Uh, there's probably like an old Sun Tzu saying here um, that I can't articulate. You know, well, it's it, actually I can. The in Sun Tzu and the Art of War is appear weak when you are strong, appear strong when you are weak. Um, that maybe didn't make my point very well. <laughs> this appears strong and I think is strong. So disregard that. But uh, uh, so ideally what we'd see though is a nice, uh, is if we get a rocket on this. But I think, you know, again, bull, bull, sorry, Bitcoin is our North Star and any bull movement there or bear movement there is gonna affect, is gonna affect things. But it is, it is something to make a mental note. Everything is a sea of red, everything's down, phantom coin is up. Hmm. That's when you uh, put your hand up, everybody take your hand and can stroke your chin and go, hmm, right? So it's curious. Uh, so I don't know, a, a medium risk trade here would be go long with this, with a tight stop, of course. You know, so if you wanted to do that, there. 
it's tight stop loss. Where would the, um, you know, I mean, certainly what's a good target on this? Well, this is a good time to pull out our Fibonacci golden pocket from the high to the low. So the bounce target on that, you know, not very high. We've already kind of come up a bit. Uh, and actually, I think, uh, you know, if we get a push higher, it'll, it could come up to that golden pocket, but you know, it already did. It did back here. And it actually got up to the, the seven, eight, six level. So we can disregard that, that that's move has already happened. So um, then you'd be looking at more of a hitting the recent highs, seven to one risk reward ratio. I, I think that's fair. I, I think, you know, let's take a look at the weekly here because uh, again, one of the strengths of the indicators are, is one of the strength, one is, yeah, one of the strengths is, uh, that was a tricky one. And I had to resort back to college English there. Uh, but look at this, though. Let me get rid of that for a second. Now, this is what I do like about Fancoin. Back up above its 50-week moving average. And what do we see here on the technicals there? Well, I was hoping we'd see something more bullish, and we don't. So I, I think Phantom Coin is just, it's, it's a, we're at a tricky spot in all of this. And on the weekly, it's kind of given us a take profit uh, button there. So, um, but but here's what here's what I like a lot is that we're above the 50 week EMA. So I still like that trade that we just put on. Uh, not trading, not financial advice. Do your own research, et cetera, et cetera. Trading is risky. All of that, true. But whoops. For those of you that love Phantom Coin, um, I, I would I would be remiss if I didn't say, don't wait too long on this. If you like Phantom in the long run, because when she runs, she runs. And in the next bull run, I have done some other analysis where I think there's another 600x in Phantom Coin in the long run. So, you know, this is like a, almost a hundred, a 92 to one. Let, let me not give you guys, you know, don't bet the farm here, but let, let's just say a reasonable target here in the short term would be here, resistance level, and, and uh, when the markets come back. And if Bitcoin runs to 30,000, hey, look at that. There's a 19 to 1 risk reward ratio, just showing you how these things play together. And um, uh, let's see, I take this away here. It's distracting. But but once the 21 week comes above the 50 week, that's a good sign. But usually it's that's a late indicator. You know, here we have the opposite after everything had fallen apart. So I do always say coins have their own personalities. Now this thing's inching higher though. See back here when the 21 week got back above the 50, August of uh, 2020, and then, so this is important, just very important. I, so look, pay attention here. August of 2020, pushed up higher, pulled back in, and then we recommended it right here on the 50-week moving average in January of 2021. Had a little rocket there too. Technically two in a row, three in a row. And then, of course, it just took off like a mad madman, I guess you could say. And uh, 17,000 like to the height was 20,000 percent, 200 X. How many of you like that? I'm just saying, keep an eye on that. All right. So uh, anyway, well, let's do this a little bit of change of um, topic here. I want to hop over to the Bitcoin monthly and um, again with our indicators. So. In case you guys haven't seen this, I, we have shared this, uh, but here are the only four times, the last four times, and the only four times that the monthly ERI has triggered as far back as the data goes to, 20, to 2010, and it really didn't have enough data then on a monthly basis. The only time that the monthly ERI has fired, let me just make this bigger for you guys, is at market bottoms. Uh, at or near, okay. So right here in, in the 2011-2012 bear market, when Bitcoin fell to the disastrously, to the disasterly, is that the word? Disaster, disastrously low price of $3. 
trying to make a joke there, kind of blew it. Uh, and um, then again, in 2015 here, when it came down again, now this is the caution that I have for everyone, and but I'll just show you here. So basically the 2019 market, now this is, this is what we really have to keep in mind here, two things. Um, so I'll just move the 2012 out of the way because that was early. It was an anomaly. The last two are what we want to focus on. So the big question there is, so we have an ERI here. And we also have the TSI going green on a monthly basis. Question is, do we push higher and go down and retest like in 2015? Okay. Like I've proposed, we've pushed up 50%. Great. But we did that back here and then we fell 40%. If we fall 40% from current levels, takes us back to around, it takes us down around 14,000 for a, uh, a new low uh, for this uh, bear market. Or do we hold um, at, at the, you know, the 15, 16,500 level, maybe retest 7 to 15,500 level. So that's certainly possible. And, and I can't tell you which way it's gonna go. If it goes and closes above 15.3, I think we push higher like 2019, and it shoots right up to 30,000. Here, here's what would be interesting though. Let's take a look at this. This is a little bit more advanced. Usually we do this in the active trader class, but let's see, let's say that from the bottom, if we do this kind of a thing, where could that go? Uh, yeah, I mean, that goes to 48K, call it 50K. And it never looked back. So, we have to watch very carefully this battle. This is the battle that's happening right now. You guys, do we push up and crush crash back down or we, do we keep going? And, and that is the question. So with that in mind, let's take a look at our other indicators. So we have our trend strength indicator back in 2015. So we had the TSI going higher and it pulled back ever so slightly. It doesn't look like much here, but that was a big pullback on the price. And then it continued higher. 2019 just kept rocketing higher. So what do we have here? Could we see this pullback? Is that it's probably more likely to pull back? And many experts are saying that the real recession doesn't hit. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on this more tomorrow. Uh, but the real recession doesn't hit till later in the year. And what's happening, though, also is uh, that I didn't really talk about is China's flooding. They're, they're easing. Uh, while the U.S. Uh, SEC is quantitative tightening, China's easing. Uh, they're, they're flooding. China and Japan are flooding money back into the markets. So that could pump Bitcoin short term and cause Powell to keep raising interest rates and crash U.S. markets and ultimately so a new dynamic we have to be a little careful here okay so and um we've already covered this uh news here but um uh, beware of bing ai chat and gpt pump and dump tokens watch the market report live yeah we'll, we'll look at our ai tokens list tomorrow as well because those have been on fire all right any questions you guys uh let's see i thought there was a bull flag on the four hour tam frame uh hector there might be we were looking at the hourly a moment ago. Uh, I'm sorry, the daily got me confused there. So I'll just jump back. Uh, we can look at the four hour. Um, I mean, it's the same. It would be the same on, you know, just be easier to see on the daily. But I, I trust the daily more in terms of follow through. Four hours is going to give you a little more noise. We can look at it. Um, we can look at it right now. So just a little more noise here. Let me just do this, open that up. So uh, in terms of uh, this other stuff, uh, the, uh, yeah, the bull flag, I mean, it's, it's there. I'll clean this up a little bit. It's easier to see on the daily. Turn off these ERIs. Uh, I mean, I guess the question is why complicate things? You certainly can look at it on four hour. Four hour would give a little bit earlier indication of what's gonna happen. Right, so, and the bull flag that uh, Hector is referring to and that we showed on the daily is this. Same kind of deal, the um, flagpole. You know, there. And so we have other support here on this. What is that one? I thought I turned off. This is the, which EMA is that one? That would be a 200 
EMA. 200 on the four hour. I don't know why I have that in the first place. All right. At any rate, <clears throat> we have the build the bull flag and the target <clears throat> 30,000, like I said. Uh, okay. Let's see a lot of noise here, but we have bearish divergence. So let's see. We have a also, it's worth looking at the four hour for sure on the for, for other reasons though, Hector. I want to see the ERI. We've got a bearish ERI. So clue we go lower. We have the TSI heading lower. Secondary, secondary. I think we I do think we come down to retest this lower level. I do. Uh signal also red. But look at this bearish divergence. So, you know, this is the big, this is a big reason. So we've been pushing higher. And um, okay, so well, not necessarily higher here, but go back to the right time frame. S straight across. Y you know where the real divergence is, is back here. So we have this, uh, watch this on the four hour. I'll just duplicate it. It's been going higher there. And I'll make that black. Okay. So higher highs, this evening out, come down in here though, on the RSI, lower lows. That's one, so one, two, three, quadruple bearish divergence and here as well. So I, 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 I'm more than likely we're heading, we're pulling in. We're not gonna break it on this pump, I think. You see that? And this just means that the strength has been waning. It's been coming out when you see that. And I could pull up a stochastics RSI, but the RSI is, is good enough. And um, sometimes we see it on our own TSI, um, but this is used for different purposes. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. So, well, <laughs> that was, uh, sorry, FTM USD bull flag on four hour. However, I, I, we can go back to it, but it's okay. I mean, but more importantly, I want to want to really focus in on the indicators for crypto mastery, and uh, we can unpack that in Active Trader tomorrow. Um, is there a difference in the index charts versus a regular coin one, such as USD? I don't know, Alex, what you mean, but that's a question for tomorrow's class. Uh, we'll, we'll look at indexes and things. Uh, I mean, as far as I know, we're holding above a trillion on uh, total market cap, so that's good. But just looking at this. Uh, radar red, we have the double bearish ERI, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we had two TSIs going red. Okay, now this is something that's in the advanced. All right, this is good. So in the advanced uh, section of the trader checklist that you guys have, this is Active Trader, right? So um, there's an example of that of this exact thing. So we have two bearish ERIs, okay? And uh, what we wanna pay attention to here is the slope of the TSI, kind of like the bearish divergence on the RSI, but do you see this? ERI, bearish ERI one and two, lower highs. That's another indication we're going lower on the four hour. You guys see that? Little more advanced. We'll talk about it tomorrow. I mean, this is supposed to be more beginner class. So, um, and just keeping in in line with the um, the uh, overall thesis of this uh, class here, uh, let's. Uh, I can pull up Phantom Coin briefly on the four hour. We did kind of cover that uh, here and moved on a little bit. But where is Phantom here? Phantom Coin. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, let's see. I don't see a bull flag necessarily here could could um not really i mean i'm more uh i'm not sure what you're seeing there it's it's a bullish it is bullish though let's let's not look at the the full flag let's not look for lines in the sand what we should be looking at here is a bullish eri ah very nice <clears throat> three in a row and bullish tsi so again, the first ERI would have been invalidated. Why? TSI was red and heading down. Okay. Very important you have these in conjunction. 
And um, so this one was red. And even this one uh, was, was still red. So that would have been invalidated. This one, however, ERI green, TSI green, and the signal line turning green. So phantom coin to me looks bullish in the short term. So now what, what would we want to do here? Anybody? What do we want to look for here? Well, see, when you start seeing this like the matrix, you're going to start seeing these things. <laughs> right? And then this trend is your friend until the trend changes. Okay? So, anybody? We want to be watching very carefully. Are we in a new uptrend here on Phantom Coin? It would appear so. It would appear so, and and hopefully a long one. A lot of good news on Phantom Coin. Like all of these fit fitting our narrative here. So, and these are almost parallel. This one, this one. So, I would suggest uh, that. Um, Slightly different slope, but not by much. And our indicators, again, ERITSI signal. I turned off the bell indicator, but let's uh, let's see. Um, open that up. I think we might. We've got something going on there and a bell. So Phantom Coins is swimming upstream. It's the salmon swimming upstream. We have a green lower line and a bell. When does a four-hour candle close? In two, two more hours. Keep an eye on Phantom Coin, you guys. Uh, four hour. Let's turn on our EMAs. Uh, okay, that's also interesting. Above the twenty one and fifty EMAs, this is where you really want to use that successful trade checklist. Phantom Coin looking pretty good. Okay, and again, tight stop, but the upside is in our favor. All right, let's do this. I uh, I'm going to go back to a daily. I'm not sure why I'm on air swap here. Let's go back to the Bitcoin, Bitcoin here. And so let's, well, let's look at some news. So, um, you know, we're coming up on the hour. This is a shorter class here. One of the things we do in uh, the Crypto Mastery class is we'll go and look at our uh, screeners. I'm going to go to the Crypto Pairs screeners. And again, we want to clean up some of the noise here. And so in terms of the uh, filters and things like that, I'm going to just adjust some of these on the uh, the menu, uh, this is the only part of the UI I don't love because it's um I was missed like where where to turn these things off and everything. It's financial volume, uh, and so price percentage change change high and low. I don't need. Uh, and I'm trying to turn that off. Remove the column. Okay, so we can right click, remove the column. That's fine. I don't care about high, low. I want change, percentage, change, volume. Don't really need volume 24 hours. Sometimes that's uh, telling and you can search for that volume 24 hour change. Sometimes interesting, but um, technical rating I want to keep. Exchange we want to adjust. So I won't delete that. We're going to go under any. And instead of any, I want to just have a Binance uh, US and I'll do Coinbase. We could do KuCoin because there are some interesting things on KuCoin happening, but I don't want to go crazy. Uh, basically, we've covered most of that. So we have Binance US and KuCoin. That's going to catch most of it. So we have uh, FET. Now, FET is one of those AI coins, Fetch AI. I mean, this thing is in a nice uptrend. We'll uh, look at that. It's had a nice uptrend there. Uh, but uh, what else we have? Let's look at technical ratings. GRT, strong sell, if you saw that. That's interesting. Uh, all right, APT, 2X short. So that's a little bit, um, you know, the underlying would be APT. Uh, that is um, interesting, you know, but we don't have enough data for our indicators to be effective. And that's really one I wanted to uh, focus in on. We have PAX. And not, uh, I, I don't want to do much there. KuCoin's questionable on many of these coins. So what are we looking at here? We're on a daily. That doesn't have enough history. We have um, 
Let's see. Let's see if I see any I recognize here because I want you guys, I don't want to be sending you down the path of looking at uh, various sundry of shit coins and et cetera. So let me expand this up here. If there's anything you guys want to look at, we can look at the chart, Crypto Mastery. Uh, so you can put that in. Let's see, FET we looked at. Not much looking good here because the markets are down. Right. So this is usually a good time to look at um, what's on the strong sell list and maybe start looking for a, uh, a buy point. So if I click technical rating and we go back up to strong sell, so we have GRT 2X. Let's not get into the 2X leverage tokens. Serum. It's like a knife, a dagger in the heart. I, 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 I'm long serum. I'm a believer in serum. I've been holding, faithfully holding serum but it has forsaken me. Thank you, Sam Bankman-Fried. Uh, Serum is a built on the Solana blockchain. It's a derivatives-based project that just got crushed with the whole FTX uh, stuff. We'll just leave it there. Anyway, but uh, not a big deal. Um, is it looking, is it pulling back to a buy point? Now, if I'm looking for pullbacks, I wanna look for my EMAs, oops. Uh, put those on, but CRM doesn't look too good. I don't know. I don't know that we're going to find too much today. This isn't the time to be looking for these because on this big pullback, it's sort of like everything uh, doesn't look great. And I'm not seeing anything that I really recognize or want to pull up for you guys. Um, so anyway, I mean, that's about it, you guys. Uh, we could, um, the Atom... 3S short as a sell. That's kind of a big double negative and just going to confuse everyone. Uh, amp. Uh, that's a different. That's Amp Forth. I wonder what happened to Amp though. Remember Amp? AMP? I had an inside tip. <laughs> right? Those usually work out, don't they? That that was going to $10. Made some money with Amp. I'm glad I dumped it early because I saw the charts. I mean, this thing. Okay, well, look, I don't know. Let's look at AMP for lack of a better candidate. The opposite of up and to the right, down and to the right. But what can we see here? Um, well, not not a not a beautiful breakout, but trying. It's trying. So. What do our indicators show? Well, you know, they say even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. We may have stumbled upon a nut here, y'all. All right, so ERI on, check. TSI green, check. Signal, green, check. Hmm, rubbing my chin there, hmm. Uh-oh, uh-oh, and we have a bell, you guys. Looky there, found a nut for us. Um, all right, so this night now I'm gonna look for negatives. Okay, what would invalidate my hypothesis, but I this is in the 21 day is above the 50, it's rising. Again, refer to your successful checklist. So right now we have five, we have ERI, one, TSI, two, signal, three, bell is four, we have, the up trending uh, 21 day above the 50. So that's five. The only thing that would make this better is if we had a what? Starts with an R and rhymes with socket. This is the interactive part of class, you guys. Yes. You need to uh, have some coffee, and wake up. I'm looking for an answer here, you guys. What is What would make this ideal? Thank you, Tori. The rocket. Somebody's awake. Right, the rocket on the launch pad. And um, we kind of had one right here, though. Right in here. Uh, the wick is on the launch pad. You know, the, to be, ideally, they, you know, the, and again, refer to that checklist for the ideal. That's why I made that. An ideal rocket, though, God, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to go visit Joe and chain him to the, in the basement, as it were, until we build a scanner for finding the rocket. Because anyone see it? 
anyone see the rocket here? Looky there. Beautiful. Textbook rocket right on the launch pad. Could have used more fuel. Nice. The wick, the fuse is down below. And she shot up in the air like a Chinese spy balloon. And here come the F-18s to shoot it down. So we're looking for the new, <laughs> the, uh, the next one. I, I don't know. I'm like, I was tempted to say this is a wounded Chinese spy balloon just floating sideways. Um, but just kidding. Just kidding. CCP. I'm just kidding. Guys, if I disappear, you know why. Uh, all in good fun. All right. So what we want to find here. So here's just here's the thing we want to. Now, this is resistance up in here, but we're in we're rising up. So amp here. Listen, at five point zero zero five two zero. I like amp here a bit. Um, you know, well, I would like it more back on the 50 day moving average. So what, what can we do here? Uh, we can uh, do a few things. I mean, uh, certainly uh, an early alert would be right click on the 21 day EMA, add alert on the EMA crossing down. Okay. And so that would be touching support. So I'll just now and here's what I usually do. I don't need all this gobbledygook in here. I'm just going to delete that because when the message comes up, you want to know what it means. So we're going to say AMP daily uh, uh, 21 EMA cross by question mark. And that, that means, hey, pull it up, dummy, and look at it for further evaluation. Uh, now, another one I'm going to do an alert on is on the 50 day at an alert. Same thing, crossing down. Uh, and now here's a little more advanced trick. If you want to know every time, and I, I'm going to say, I want to know every time AMP touches the rising, well, it doesn't know it's rising, but the 50-day moving average, I want to know every time. Once per bar close and expiration open-ended. Now, be careful with these because you might get uh, annoyed with them and then have to go on here and change it back. But once per bar close, that means at least once a day, it'll alert you to if this crosses down the 50 period moving average. Uh, so um, there you go. And then here I'd say again, I say amp daily uh, 50 Oops. EMA cross. Uh, I could say cross down, but I'll just leave it there and say bye question mark. And, um, you know, you can, you can put it in the alert name too. That's just when you go back in to delete names of alerts, that's what that is. But the message that shows up on your, by email, if you have that turned on, SMS, if you have that turned on, I uh, wonder why I don't, it usually gives you those options though. Huh, I don't see those. Anyway, I'll create that. Oh, you know what? That's, it's a new tab, I believe. Edit, oops. Uh, did they move it? They might have moved it on us. Notifications. Okay, so it all used to be on one tab. That's good. That's new-ish. I mean, I've noticed it, but notify in the app, pop-up, email, webhook, SMS. Why not? Play your sound, three notes, reverb. There you go. Um, webhooks, we could customize something potentially in our learn alert service. And, and we are working on alert service, by the way. So, so anyway, uh, not to belabor the point, you guys get it. Um, all right, so basically I've got alerts now. This will rise as the EMAs rise. So basically, I mean, we are in the Goldilocks zone, sort of to coin a term that I uh, borrowed from uh, the, where Bitcoin is now. But, you know, this is, well, you know, this, we know what this is, you guys. It's very ugly cup and handle pattern. Uh, so at any rate, in either way, we want to set an alert because once it gets kind of above here, oops, not there. We want to, uh, a breakout above this level is, is bullish. So that's what I also want to know. And, and I'll set an alert there too as well. And I'm going to go a little higher, just to say there, and that would be a little more momentum. 
So, I mean, I kind of swore amp off because I, I lost, I made some money, I lost some money, but see that cup here and the handle forming. So we'll break out above the handle, it's go time and it's in a new uptrend. So there we have it. We have one to keep an eye on and um, you can buy amp on Gemini. Uh, I think that's, uh, where is amp? It's probably more places by now. That, yeah, I do, th I, I've heard it's a good project long-term. So, you know, those of you that have some long-term capital to deploy may want to, like, you know, uh, when I say I have inside info, a friend of a friend of mine has a friend who's apparently worth net worth ten million. Said it was a good project and will go to ten dollars. That doesn't doesn't mean anything, y'all. You guys, it's uh, uh, it, it so. But at these prices, it's on Coinbase now. Uh, Gemini Finance, uh, not. Binance US, it's on KuCoin, but you don't you don't need that. Um, AMP is, um, yeah, Gemini is usually where I would get it. So, uh, so just based on that, uh, you know, looks bullish. Let's look at the weekly here. So the weekly um, is uh, a little bit more topped out, actually. So, so this isn't a Titan to buy right away. We have the bag of money here, the bag of money, profit taking. It's overbought here. Now, I would expect this to pull back. That's why the weekly is so important. Ideal time to buy it, January 2nd of 2023. Um, actually, I take that back. Uh, I would have said as it crossed the 20 line around January 9th, January 15th even. Because, um, yeah, I might have missed a bit of the run there. But you can see that cup and the handle forming. So that's why I do recommend you go back and forth on the daily weekly. Uh, yeah, the weekly is showing a bit of a pullback. So that's good news, you guys, because a pullback, uh, I wouldn't go, wouldn't probably come back too far. It would pull back. I'd love to see it pull back to the 50-day moving average. And we see a cycle down on the TSI and catch it on the next upswing. Uh, now, breakouts do happen. That's why we want to get you know have those alerts set. But this is a good example of how you use our indicators uh, along with uh, traditional ones. Yeah, but, but look at that. Mostly green on uh, the radar too. So we'll see what happens. There's one you can keep an eye on. Um, so anyway, you guys, that's all we have time for for this class. Um, if you're an active trader, uh, please join us tomorrow at the same time. And uh, we'll dig a little deeper. We're looking to uh, eat some of the other coins, et cetera, and the uh, indices. So, uh, and of course, um, looking a little deeper into the news, et cetera, and uh, some higher level stuff, you know, like we usually do. But anyway, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, these are being uploaded to YouTube. Uh, if you like what you see here, please like and subscribe to the YouTube's channel here. And we'll continue to do these and um, on a weekly basis. And eventually you may even live stream. It might go crazy. And I uh, do it live here as these are. These are live. So I don't know. Maybe we should just do these live on YouTube going forward. Maybe we will. All right. Stay tuned, everybody. Thanks very much. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Take care.